It's in literally every single room. Really? Yeah. Should we see this room and see? Yeah. 34. I need to get my phone. So I'm going to send that to them. I'm going to email them. That. Yeah. Take okay. care. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. So I've just come to a house in Wandsworth, run by Wandsworth Council. The tenants asked me to come here because they've been suffering with disrepair, living with damp and mould, and have been constantly ignored. It started out personal. It was about my home and my dad. Then it became wider, about my estate. And then the whole of London. I'm Quajo. I live in social housing and I've been campaigning for better conditions and repairs. I started putting short videos on Twitter and TikTok. Now I've teamed up with The Guardian to make something longer. It's part of a series of how ordinary people can use video to make change. Hey, how are you? I'm good, how are you? Yeah, I'm good. Thanks for inviting me. Hello, 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 how are you? How long have you been here for? Three years, almost four. Has it been pretty much straight away where you got mould? Yeah. I'm guessing when you moved in it was probably all painted and all... Yeah, it was freshly painted over, mm. um, so you couldn't see it. But then I, a week after being here, I noticed the patch in the corner. Mm. And I've called them out, they've done a mould wash, so I thought, OK, well, that will get rid of it. But it's just progressively, day by day, getting mm. worse. And they've just kept giving me mould wash after mould wash. It's a temporary fix to something that is causing health issues to my children now. I've asked my doctors, does it affect breathing, does it affect eczema, and they've said, yeah, quite severely it does. Both of them have asthma, yeah. and um, my second yeah. youngest, Kion, was actually admitted to hospital for respiratory infections and he couldn't breathe properly. Yeah. You can just buy one of these from anywhere. Mm -hmm. It's got two, like, prongs in it. And you push it in, and it should give a reading. So now it's showing six. And that's saying eight. Anything above 20 is when you should, like, 20%. Um, when you're doing a damp meter reading is when you should be basically worried. So this one's higher. It's 14. It's even higher. 16. 16 again. They should have done this. Tested it. Oh, it's going on the mattress. Yeah. These were the kids' pillows. And as you can see, there's mould spores on here and here. Okay. This is on 27. I need to get my phone. I see you've got the windows open, Letitia. Yeah, I keep them open as much as I can. They said for me to keep the heating on 15 at all times because then that will combat the mould, but it doesn't. My um, heating bill is £40 a month and going up. 34. 35. So I'm going to send that to them, I'm going to email them that. I'll say, I've gone there and done it myself. Mm -hmm. A job that you guys are supposed to do. All the pictures and stuff I've sent to you, Definitely. I have sent to them. Yeah. And I've sent the pictures of Kion skin, I've sent mm. doctor's letters. Mm. So even with the doctor's notes? They so disregard medical, it. Medical disregard professionals it. have contacted them. Mm -hmm. They've done nothing. Mm -hmm. Your MP. She said that she wrote an email to the CEO of Wandsworth and he was going to come and see if there was structural causes of mould, mm. which I believe there are. And they um, there's been, I've not heard nothing mm. back. They blame me as the tenant. Yeah. Um, they've said it's because I've... We're overcrowded and I've made myself overcrowded, that's mm. why it's coming back. But actually, I had this mould here before I had my other two kids when it was just me and Cairo here. Mm. This is Kion. He's turning two tomorrow. Oh, he's turning yeah, two he's tomorrow. Turning two. But this is, um, ha oh. it's constant. He's got atopic eczema. It's not caused by the damp, but it definitely exacerbates it. So he's had repeated open wounds and infection. Who's the next youngest? He's my eldest. Eldest? Yeah. How old are you? Five. So you'll be in reception. Reception? <laughs> <laughs> so funny, I remember being in reception all those years ago. Now I'm old. Who's this oh. one? Uh, Joa, he's four months. Oh. He's started to get eczema all along his face. Yeah. They're not going to move me. They said to me that there's, um, I would need a two bedroom property and within the whole of Southfield's area, there's no two bedroom properties. And I'm, um, on the waiting list, so they said it would take a good few years. And when they say that you've made yourself overcrowded, mm -hmm. they mean because... I've had other pregnancies. And how many of you are here? Four. Four. It's just, I mean, if you turned around and said that to them, mm -hmm. don't have no more kids. What an, ex what a, what an excuse, it's just so infuriating. <laughs> He's so wide awake. Honestly, I really appreciate you helping mm. me and... No, that's all right, don't worry. I'll email them today and see if they change their mind. So 
I'm just sending a tweet with the damp meter readings that I took at Letitia's house. The tenants asked me to come here because they've been suffering with disrepair, living with damp and mould, and have been constantly ignored. I've come to a uh, property in Camden. I've been invited by the family. Uh, down here and I've driven up. Um, so I've just come to a tenant's house in Stockwell. I've been asked to come down because they've been suffering with really bad damp and mould. They've complained, they've complained. They've complained. So this is the kids' bedroom. All four walls was covered in black mould. Very, very so this is the toilet in the property. The mould and damp hasn't been treated. All four corners covered in black mould and they've been complaining for years but ignored. This tenant had raw sewage running down their bathroom walls. Again, they had complained about it. An absolute disgrace. All times a huge leak. They complained time and time again, but were ignored. Severe damp and mould in cockroaches in a child's bedroom. This is my estate, uh, Eastfield's estate, and I live here with my sisters. So I moved here a few years ago, my dad, around 2018. When we moved in, he was just so happy that we had a place, but it had mice, cockroaches, damp, mould, kitchen falling apart. He did then start complaining, but he was just completely ignored. Part of the ceiling caved in due to a leak. They came and removed the whole ceiling, not telling me that it contained asbestos. And for three or four months over, over winter, there was no living room ceiling. To walk into what looked like a building site where whilst paying rent was just complaining, complaining, complaining. It got to the point where at 8 a.m. no one showed up, so now it's 10.24, and I'm so used to this, so I rang them. The person on the other line was rude, so they're not coming out, they're really busy, hung the phone up. And I remember just being stood there like, what do I do now? And then I was just like, tweet it. It was the first tweet in regards to houses, and within like an hour, two hours, it was already up to like close to a thousand, probably around 900 retweets, comments. If you scroll down, like it's endless. This was a year ago. How many people watched uh, the last video you tweeted? I think it's four million people that were seeing my, which is just nuts. After my first tweets got noticed, I knocked on more than 550 doors, my whole estate, to ask people if they had had the same problems with dish repair that I did. The estate was then covered on national news. People with repair problems got in touch from all over London and the UK. Pleased to meet you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've been a big fan actually. I've been oh. following you for a few months now and Thank you. No, it's really good what you're doing. They've purposely run it down as an excuse to sort of like knock it down and, and rebuild. And rebuild. Hello there. It's really nice to meet you. Welcome to my family. How long have you been here again? Early 60s I've been over here. The council has not wanted to spend money mm. on any adjustments for disabilities. If they had put the stair lift upstairs mm. in the first place, 2017, mm. I would have lived upstairs. Mm. But now my liquor sink in the way I have my shower is mm. a shame. No one should have to bathe in a sink. And it's not the tenant's responsibility, it's the council's duty of care to their tenants. He's been dubbed the Marcus Rashford of terrible housing. Quajo Twenaboa has gone viral for exposing some of Britain's worst social housing after living in a mouldy, cockroach-infested apartment with his sick father. I've got friends who have parents from Ghana that are just, I mean, completely, completely strict. But he, um, he couldn't stay serious for too long. So it's rare for a father of three to be the main carer, but, yeah, he did it. For his job, he looked after the elderly, um, the disabled, and he'd done that pretty much since he came over here, I think. I still remember that blue carrier thing. He was diagnosed with cancer stage one, so in the space of about a year, that progressed to stage four, and he, was, he had a hospital bed moved in here, and so he was up against that wall um, in here for the good part of a year, as it was like progressing. There was damp, there was mould, cockroaches, bathroom falling apart. I remember the nurses sh would struggle to even bathe them in there. It's just completely in inhumane, I think. They don't care. Um, tenants are treated like a rental figure at the end of the month as opposed to human beings, I think. And that's why I've continued to do what it is that I'm, I do. Although that had happened to him, it's gone on to help 
a lot more other people and I think he would have wanted that. So the damn meter reading pictures I sent to them and I didn't get anything substantial back from them in regards to that. I put on social media too, on Twitter, shared it. I'm depressed at the moment. Mm. Um, so I've just not chased anything up because I just, I don't have the energy to anymore. And how are the um, kids? Not good at all. Still very much the same, mm. um, if not worse. My middle son um, is now on a sterilised inhaler otherwise he's just coughing the whole time. Coming up to the local election there was a debate between the current leader of Wandsworth Council and his competition basically so I asked him a question to do with housing and the fact that it's one of the worst councils I've come across. So the then leader of the council turned around and said there was a hundred percent decent home standard and that my analysis of the homes in Wandsworth is wrong um, well, basically. With all the evidence yeah. that we have. Yeah, so I made a thread a couple of days before the election, so that's him. And it included videos that I'd got from other tenants in Wandsworth. This was yours. So I posted that tweet and within 24 hours it was seen by a million people, which is now on two million people. And so a matter of days later, the then council leader was ousted and the council changed from Conservative to Labour, so it's now Labour run, Wandsworth. Labour has always probably been the party that does help people more than, um, I would say, Conservative. But we'll just have to see if there is that change. I mean, the majority of councils in London are Labour run, and the majority of my time is spent in London. So um, Labour need to treat it like the issue that it is. So it's not all bad news. Hello. This movement is growing. People using smartphones and social media to call their housing providers to account. And I'm starting to link up with others doing this work. What can't we do mm. as a community, as one? Mm. The council knew that this community would work together as a team. Mm. And they can't break it. And that's what they're scared of. What we did, people... two videos in YouTube. Yeah, yeah. Viral, first of all, that was an yeah. accident. Yeah, mm. it was an accident. <laughs> we had to go on BBC News before our voices were even able to be heard by the council. Being part of a group, it can give you power, but it can also be the basis of you feeling differently about your situation. We're really. still winning. Don't give up. Mm. <laughs> Some of the stories are absolutely horrific. I've come across people that have... Women that have had miscarriages. Oh, I've yeah. had people that self-harm. Yeah. I've had... One, one talent with breast cancer and now terminal bone cancer. All they want is safe home yeah. for them, I'm guessing, to yeah, yeah, yeah. pass in and also p make sure that their, their son has somewhere. It's just completely outrageous and yeah. they know this, but they don't care. I think it all starts with them caring and they, they, they're, good at, they're good at putting on their website that they care. There was a turning point in our campaign where we were like, look, private companies don't care about you. Your interest is like affordable rent and decent homes. Their interest is to cut corners mm. so that they can make more money. Mm. Private companies just need to be got out of the housing sector. Mm. Yeah. Mm. What you're doing is absolutely amazing, mm. but you you have to find some ways of like keeping something back for yourself. Um, I just yeah. want you to look after yourself yeah. as well. Yeah. <laughs> We're starting the process of moving people out. You can see that flat above's empty. Michael Gove just retweeted one of my tweets. Shout out to Michael Gove. So he wrote to Clarion Housing Association yesterday. He specifically mentioned the Eastfields estate and what was raised here. No one should have to live in a home with these conditions and it should not take years to put them right. I'm glad. Um, that this has happened because a year ago it felt like screaming out a brick wall to, to, to now have the sector of state for housing writing about the estate. It feels like finally being listened to, but I mean, it is a letter. <laughs> this film is part of a series about how people experience an injustice. People at the bottom, without a voice, can use video to find that voice. Some archive video has turned up from one of the other films. 
I'm going back to see Letitia again to watch it together. Hey, Hello. how are you? I was just saying, did you have, do you have to leave the window open like all the time? Yeah. I'm at a point where I'm trying to remain positive for my kids, but it is affecting me negatively. That like I'm in tears most of the time because mm. it's frustrating. I'm seeing my children's skin being affected. I'm seeing that they can't breathe properly. I'm seeing that we're all having to sleep in the living room and be on the sofa bed and there's no quality of life, I don't mm. feel like, in our flat. Mm. Um, sorry, I'm getting mm. a bit upset because mm, it's sorry. just, if this was me and I was putting my children in a toxic environment on purpose, people would be very quick to say, you're neglecting your kids, you're, mm. you're causing damage to them. When you tweeted my mm. situation, mm. all these people were commenting saying, mm. why don't oh, I just open trolls. the window yeah. or why don't I just clean it off? I broke down on the phone to my mum mm. and I said, they don't understand. Mm. They don't. I do all of these things and mm. it still comes back. Mm. So I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna play this video, I haven't seen it either. Okay. Um, so this will be the first time I see it too. And let's see. The door fell off. And it lay like that for three days. What I say is was when you do a complete new front door, that it says I've been told to do a patch up job. It took me a year to get the skylight fixed on the stair. It took me nine months to get a bath. And the wallpaper's starting to fall off the wall because of it. It smells. It smells terrible. What's causing this then? The dampness. <laughs> and what did the guy do? Just to clean it. I mean, it's when it comes up to rub it off with soapy water. But I don't think we should have to do that. I mean, we shouldn't have it in the first place. I've had my sheets black with it. Does it affect the kids' health at all? It's constantly got coughs and colds. I mean, he often gets chased in us. I've got to get bottles. Um, just before the summer came in, he was on one just about every two months to try and get his chest cleared up. The district council said it was condensation, that I was to keep the window open and a heater burning. And my, the window in this bedroom is never, ever closed. And we have tried a heater, but it makes no difference whatsoever. Well, they try to maintain it's your lifestyle that's at fault for condensation. And that um, with three children sleeping in the room and they're breathing, hot air hitting the cold wall causes the condensation walls. Even if there's nobody in the room, I reckon that the air coming from outside is warmer than it is in this room. People have, have been made to feel that it's their fault there's a social stigma seems to be attached to dampness. And we're very much trying to make people come out into the open and join us and force the council to do something. They keep telling us they haven't got any money. Well, that's not our problem. We pay rents to stay in these houses. It's up to them to find the money. Wow. Mad. It's actually infuriating. It infuriates me mm. to know that this has been going on and the same script has been given for so mm. many years. How many years ago was that? 40. That's like 1983, so yeah, 40-ish. That has made me really angry inside. It's almost like watching what is happening now, the same things, hearing the same stories. Yes. But it's, on, it's being taken on an old camera. Yes. These yeah. people are saying the exact same things. Yeah. Day in, day out, open your windows, put a heater on. It's your fault, it's your lifestyle. Someone in there mentioned that all that they were going to do is come and do a patch repair. Yes. Nothing's changed no. in 40 years. They yeah. say they don't have money. They didn't have money 40 years ago. Imagine these little ones 40 years from now. Fighting for better living conditions. Mm. It's disheartening. Because it makes me feel like mm. this is just going to be our situation mm. for as long as we live here. Mm. It's for only, for only everyone could watch that. Yeah. Do you think you'll be in social housing for the rest of your life? No, I really hope not. I'm thankful that there is a council and that we can have somewhere to live, but it still doesn't mean that me and my children su should be subjected to living like this. I'm going to go to uni, get my teacher training degree, and I want to buy my own home.
Gosh, that hole. Yeah. This is what it's been like for the last year. That it's constant, one from one place to another to another. You may want to make sure you haven't eaten before watching these. It's very different to what the platform has on it already. I, mean, I wanted to show that it can be used for highlighting social issues and people's problems. And without film and video, I don't think I'll be able to do that. But I think that's the difference between my work and work that has existed before and the fact that you can spread a message at the click of a button to absolutely millions of people.